At the northern edge of Muskegon County, just beyond the sandy shores of Lake Michigan, you will find White Lake. Once the home of fur traders and Indians, and later the lumberjacks, this beautiful landscape has been part of a diverse history. It was a time much later that would change the face of this environment forever, the arrival of chemical companies. From my perspective, I was Secretary of the Chamber of Commerce at the time that uh, we heard that the Hooker Chemical Company was looking at western Michigan for the establishment of a new plant to produce uh, chlorine. And uh, one of the reasons they were looking at West Michigan, of course, was because there was a known salt deposit along the lake shore. We had a gentleman in town, uh, Art Myers, who um, was a well driller and was very familiar with the geological strata in Montague and uh, he contacted the Hooker people and told them that he thought this would be a good place for him to uh, test. They put down a well, uh, found uh, salt and indicated that probably they would uh, locate a plant here. So Hooker Chemical Company built a plant in Montague, Michigan. By 1952, the plant was in production making caustic soda and hydrogen using many of the resources provided by the earth, such as salt and water. Many jobs were created, and new taxes were brought to the community, giving life to a drab economy. Hooker Chemical is in operation, and a community, blinded by a good economy, was forced to deal with the fact that Hooker Chemical would be fencing in the 800-acre plant. Were they fencing in the plant, or were they fencing the community out? Questions began to arise. Everyone was pretty much in favor of their locating here because of the economic impact it would have on the community, a good, good economic, economic impact. impact. In 1956, Hooker began producing hexachlorocyclopentadiene, a compound used mostly in pesticides. It was the misuse of this product that would lead to the eventual downfall of the company in the early 1980s. One of the uh, workers out there uh, decided to blow the whistle on what was going on. And this was in 1977 that uh, he finally came forth. For years after I started working there in the HCL department, HCL department, they have a HCL catch-all there. And uh, this catch-all catches the condensate coming over uh, in the disposal line, which is hydrogen chloride in uh, C-56. It was becoming more apparent that the clear waters of White Lake were in jeopardy. Toxic substances were being pumped into White Lake at an alarming rate of 150,000 gallons per day. After signing an affidavit with his allegations against Hooker Chemical Company, Warren Dobson fled his home in fear for his family's well-being. No one expected that they would evolve into something which was most destructive to the uh, environment. The word toxic to some people kind of uh, a sort of a, uh, a bad material, and I, I believe it's merely a material that should be handled with care and by knowledgeable people. Dr. Richard Radiski was once contracted by Hooker Chemical Company. We found some very high levels of PCBs and other chemicals related to the occidental discharge in an area pretty close to the old outfall pipe. Occidental uh, used hexachlorocyclopentadiene to make pesticide compounds. And they uh, certainly have a high degree of toxicity. They're toxic to humans. And the real problem associated with those materials is they bioaccumulate. Dioxin is a chlorinated compound that's formed when you burn materials that contain chlorine. And it's one of the most toxic small compounds known to man. and handling uh, toxic materials. 
You don't think uh, there's any real problem then for this community or for White Lake? No, I don't think so. Ladies around there, this is not a chocolate factory or uh, what do you think we make here? You know, something to that effect. For three days prior to the time that I quit, they had let an eight inch line just spew forth hydrogen chloride and chlorine C56 gas. As more rumors began to spread about Hooker Chemical Company, the citizens of White Lake began to take increasing concern to what was happening to their lush community behind Hooker's fences. They listened intently to allegations about barrel pileups, causing toxic waste to seep into the earth, polluting their once pristine groundwater. The tides had turned against Hooker Chemical. Protests became commonplace as citizens would gather outside the plant, protesting the pollution it had caused to White Lake. There was the Love Canal hooker plant, which was famous for the problems they had with health. We were dealing with the very same chemicals that they had there, but nobody was paying any attention. People who knew what was going on there, the, the, the engineers from the Water Resources Commission, folks like that, why didn't they talk to the chemists? I don't know. You have to ask them that. All I can tell you is the best of my knowledge, they didn't. At first, uh, people didn't believe my husband, didn't believe anything uh, that we were trying to say because Hooker would deny everything. And they had this stranglehold on their employees not to say anything. They told their employees if they were ever questioned, they were supposed to say it came from DuPont or something like that. <laughs> lies, lies, lies. It scares me because I know how toxic these chemicals can be. Yes, C-56 is toxic. Most people felt we have these agencies that are dealing with this. We don't need to complain. They're monitoring and all this, and they're not. Until we get that cleaned up, it's going to impact everybody's health. Hooker Chemical was faced with its biggest problem. The citizens had made it clear that polluting was no longer an option. Clean up our lake or get out. In the late 1970s, the state of Michigan delivered its ultimatum to Hooker Chemical Company, and one of the most expensive and elaborate toxic waste cleanup operations ever began to take shape. Initial sampling did show that uh, the samples of sediments at the bottom of White Lake below the outfall did contain concentrations of C-series compounds and PCBs, and these were fairly significant. The C-series compounds and the volatile organic compounds can have quite an impact on people. Some of them are carcinogens. They can cause cancer, so uh, it is very important to get those compounds out of the environment in order to protect human health and the wildlife that lives in the area. Wastes were exhumed in the early 80s under a state of Michigan consent judgment that were buried on site and basically consolidated in what they call the vault. The vault is a large mound where the waste, mostly contaminated soil, is piled high. The bottom of the vault is lined with clay and it has a leachate collection system that captures any water that may contain the contaminants. The leachate is then pumped out into a tank, then transported to an on-site treatment system. The vault was designed to stay there and last for hundreds of years. Trichloroethylene can cause damage to the nervous system, the liver, and the kidneys, and it can cause a skin rash if you get dermal exposure, like in drinking water while you're showering. If there's high enough concentrations in the drinking water, you can get a rash. The risks at the site currently are fairly low, only because it's fenced and there aren't any workers there. My husband got cancer. Yeah, C-56 is toxic. And I got cancer. This is not a chocolate factory. There are cases of children having uh, illnesses. The risks at the site are fairly low as long as people, people stay, stay away. away.
seen here is the vault as it appears today. Occidental um, Petroleum Corporation has assigned the management of this site to Glen Springs Holding uh, on the behalf of Occidental Chemical. Glen Springs Holding is a, a group of employees that the company has that manages Oxy's environmental sites all over the country. Um, to assist uh, Glen Springs in this endeavor, we've hired a company that specializes in uh, environmental matters. Uh, that company is CRA Services. They maintain the actual employees on the site. The Oxy site was 880 acre site of which only approximately 150 acres was impacted. The rest of the site is still undeveloped pristine woodlands. The EPA had recently asked Oxy to complete a RICRA investigation and this has essentially been completed. Uh, the investigation showed that Oxy had removed most of the impacted soils and that the groundwater plume was contained and defined as we had previously believed. Uh, in addition, EPA asked us to remove two small areas of uh, soils. This has been completed. Also, institutional controls, including uh, deed restrictions, have been placed upon the property so that the industrial area will only be used in the future for industrial or commercial applications and the uh, amount of digging that can be done on those will be limited. However, the rest of the property, with the exception of the vault area, will be available for development in the near future. I hope that they don't do what happened at Love Canal. They sold the land to build a school on and playground. In the year 1995, with little more than a guardhouse in operation, the buildings at Hooker Chemical would be blown to pieces. This symbolized the end of Hooker Chemical Company in Montague, but not the end of the pollution it had left behind. This is the carbon treatment system for treating the groundwater that's pumped from the purge well network. The eight wells pump approximately 700 gallons a minute to this site. It's separated into site one and site two. Each site has two tanks which hold 20,000 pounds of activated carbon. Uh, this is sampled and regulated under our MPDS permit before it's discharged in the White Lake. And Calgon Carbon uh, picks up the carbon, hauls off the contaminated carbon and brings in the new carbon. A great number of hooker chemical sites around the country are now run and maintained by Occidental Chemical Corporation. The pollution this company has left behind has changed the world forever. For White Lake, it will never be the same. If you can produce anthrax in a laboratory with the right controls on it, it's probably not a bad thing. But if you don't have the controls on it, it would be a devastating thing. And I think that's probably true in the chemical industry. Oh, <laughs> oh,